Tell me about the foundation and its origin and its purpose. It really is an interesting story, and it really starts with the place we're sitting right now. It was built in 1829 by Charles Coatsworth Pinckney. He was a lieutenant governor of South Carolina. His father, Thomas Pinckney, was a governor, and his grandmother, Eliza Pinckney, was a famous Eliza Pinckney that brought in to go to South Carolina. So they were a very deep-pocketed family was passed on to the Adger family that owned Adger's Wharf down in Charleston. So another wealthy family, the Reverend John Bailey Adger lived here. He's the one that translated the Bible into modern Armenian. That family passed it on to his heirs, which were the Smythe family, and they had the biggest stock breeding farm here about the turn of the century into 1900, Augustine Smythe. His brother was the mayor of Charleston about the same time. Um, after the, after the, um, the Depression, the, the house was vacant. It was not lived in. Clemson University had acquired it. We had two very forward-thinking members that we had already founded the Historic Foundation in, in the late 60s. They went to Clemson University and arranged for this house to be gifted to the Pilgrim Historic Foundation. So that really was the beginning of the organization. A few years later, they acquired Ashton Beulah from the paper company that had all that land. That house had been lived in continuously. It was in much better shape. It really is rewarding to try to do something to preserve what's being lost. A good example, uh, the Pilton Historic Foundation just acquired the Dr. William Seabrook Jenkins House in downtown Pilton. sits on one of the most prominent hills on one of the most pristine pieces of land in the upstate. We acquired the nine acres surrounding it, which has 250 year old oak trees, some of the biggest oak trees in Upper South Carolina. Really? It is a watershed and a um, headwaters of, of the um, Lake Hartwell. And we're going to make that a gallery, event space, outdoor recreation area with, um, with opportunities for, for hiking and, and all kinds of events and music events. So we're excited about that. It also has nine outbuildings and we're gonna to try to raise money to, to restore all of that. The owner of the Jenkins house actually was one of the first doctors in the Pendleton area. And then his son stayed on and practiced medicine. So that house represented most of the medical care in Pendleton for over 100 years. Really? And you can still see the original doctor's office, which was the right wing of the house, which we're going to restore hopefully into a medical museum. It's just a pristine piece of history. All of the wainscoting, all of the mantles, all of the woodworking in that house was done by a cabinet maker named Knopf, who was well known in the upstate and did most of the interiors of the antebellum houses that are in Pendleton today. In order to make all this work, you've got to come up with money and you don't get a lot of federal, state, or local help, right? It really is a miraculous feat for our hardworking 20-member board and all of the all the members of the Pilton Historic Foundation. We have a couple hundred members. Um, and it takes everything from all of those people and more to keep these um, two properties plus the guard house on the square and now the Jenkins house operating and being restored. And as you can look around you, this house is 9,000 square feet and four stories. The Pinckney's called it a summer cottage. All wood, so you can imagine the upkeep just on one house. We now have three plus the guard house, which is owned by the town of Pendleton, but they let us use it in return, we maintain that property. So we're maintaining four antebellum properties. We work diligently. We have some very smart people on our board that have been able to find, find grant money, and so we rely heavily on grant money. But our biggest source of revenue is functions. And I'll tell you that this is one great site here at Woodburn Farm to do a function, whether it's a small family reunion or whether it's a wedding on our glorious wedding lawn here that you can see has just completely been re-irrigated and re-sodded. And we have our director, and that's his main charge, is to try to coordinate um, the messaging out to the community that we're here, we're here for the community. This property needs to be used. It's part of the mission that Clemson charged us with when they gifted us the property. So come give us a call. If you have an idea, a creative idea, we'll collaborate with you on it. And the other properties eventually will do the same thing. Well, especially the Jenkins house is situated in a very strategic location. It's walking distance to the square. It's walking distance to the Pendleton Theater. It's walking distance to a couple of breweries that are now we're great. We're glad to have in town. And it's up on one of the highest hills in town. It actually 
uh, Depot Street dead ends into that property. So we have great visions of utilizing that as a public space. Our other house, Ashtabula, is open for tours and we'll certainly, if people would like to do an event at Ashtabula, we can do that. We're better set up for events here at Woodbrook. We're completely flexible if people have an idea of using any of our spaces, including the guard house. You know, we're, we're completely flexible for talking about it. In addition to events, one of our big opportunities to, to help fund the painting and the upkeep of, of these houses is by passing on a little bit of our knowledge through our docent staff to um, mainly third and fourth graders. So we have actually put together a curriculum that's directed at South Carolina history and U.S. history to third and fourth graders. So we usually have groups of 100 and 150, usually the whole third grade of a school will come out and book us and we'll have stations and then we'll rotate every 10 minutes. So we keep them moving, they don't get bored. Um, we'll, do, we'll do a little bit of history, we'll do some hands-on activities like ring races out in the backyard and then we'll have a lunch in, in the pavilion. So for a very low cost, it's a great experience for a school field trip and for a lot of schools not too far to travel. We have for years done Sunday tours. We do a 2 o'clock and a 3.30 tour at both Woodward and Ashtabula. But in addition to that, starting with COVID, we started doing on-demand tours. So if a couple calls us going down I-85 and they're going to see their you know, their grandkids down in Florida, they can call us up and um, if they give us enough notice, a couple hours even, uh, we'll open up the house for them. Now we like, you know, we prefer to have, you know, more than two people. Sure. We'll do it for as few as two people. So we're, we're telling people if, if there's time you want to come, we try to direct people to come in the morning in the summer because it's so hot. So that gives us the opportunity to do a really enjoyable tour. In the winter months, it's better to come in the afternoon because we don't have any heat or air in the, in the properties. And we do tour buses as well. And, and thanks to the visitor center down there in Anderson County, they've been great at sending us um, tour buses. Um, especially when we have some of the, the fishing tournaments here in town. We've had a lot of those visitors. But it makes a great, a, a great um, entertainment um, supplement to any kind of meeting. To have a group come out here, we can arrange to have box lunches. They can bring their own lunch or they can just come. Our new Sunset Patio makes a great place to have a glass of wine at sunset. The sunset sets right behind our historic carriage house over there. And while I'm on that, I, I really want to tell you that our, our most recent initiative has just been completed. We have converted this space into our African American Experience Museum. And we have four panels in that space, in that old historic carriage house, to honor the experience of African Americans that worked and lived on this property from the time it was built in 1829 by enslaved people right through the, the really tough reconstruction time right through to 1929. We have a historic replica slave cabin right out to our right down our road down to the horse barns. And one of the other panels in the, in the carriage house is on the African American and enslaved people's craftsmanship. The Pinckneys of Charleston had the top master carpenter in South Carolina working for them. And so we know that whoever built this house, the enslaved people, the craftsmen that built this house studied under that master carpenter. And that's why you see these majestic handmade columns and all the molding on the inside. Even the indigo and the rice production in the, in the low country is a result of expertise from Western Africans brought to this country. Let me tell you that Pendleton is a great town. And if you've not spent any time in Pendleton recently, it's worth the trip. At nighttime, we have some wonderful restaurants and more opening up in the near future. We have a great ice cream shop. We have a great bakery and cafe during the day, a great Mexican restaurant. Um, but if you take time to poke your head into our office on the town square, you can learn a little bit more about some of our upcoming opportunities. We do a ghost tour every fall, and it's a tremendous hit. That happens in October and we do a little walking tour around the town square and some of the historic properties and we have some reenactors involved in that. We also have a walking tour around town which we can set up for groups of 10 or more on demand. And again, you just need to call our director, John Perkins, who is at the um, guardhouse there, 10 to 2, Monday through Thursday, or call him anytime. He answers the phone, loves to answer the phone. Or you can go to our website. We've got a website, it's PiltonHistoricFoundation.org. It's a wonderful website, it's just been redone. 
and there's a place there where you can communicate with John um, and he can get back with you that way. There's also a place on the website to join our organization. It's a very inexpensive membership. I think it's $40 for an individual and we just encourage everybody to, to join so they can be on our mailing list and get notifications of all our upcoming events but also the wider reach we have the more it allows us to get more grant money so when you join the Pillar and Distort Foundation for $40 you not only get our newsletter and you get to know what's going on but you're helping us try to do that next step at getting some of the larger grants that it takes to keep this organization running. We've got a community that really gets things done, that has some vision, that cares what things look like. I'm heartened every day by the volunteers we get, especially from the Clemson University community. You know, we have connections here at Woodburn that go all the way back to the revolution. So the father of the builder of this house was one of the four signers for South Carolina of the U.S. Constitution, Thomas Pinckney. He was also an aide de camp to General Washington. He was friends with the Marquis de Lafayette, and we have a medal here at Woodburn that was given to the Pinckney family by the Marquis de Lafayette for their friendship and the fact that one of our local people here in town, Francis Huji, sprung him out of an Austrian prison. Believe that. Um, also, we have on the square in Pendleton a sundial that Lafayette gave to Huji, who gifted to the Farmer Society here in town. We live in a great place. I'm encouraged by the young people that move to that area and want to know more about those type things, especially when it connects to the history of your country, like Lafayette and Washington. I mean, we're connected to the very foundations of the country we live in.